Hi, welcome back to our channel. My name is Jolie and today's reading is March 24th. So welcome. Welcome to those who are new okay. and to those who are returning. Grateful that you're coming back. So let's read. So what, what are we reading? So today we're going to be reading A Little Time for Myself, which is a collection of Al-Anon personal experiences. And so it's one of the newer books from Al-Anon. And I have many of the books from Al-Anon here on this channel. Just in the description, you'll be able to see which ones those are like Courage to Change. Hope for today, One Day at a Time in Al-Anon. And also Paths to Recovery Steps. So without further ado, let's get started. Right, let's go. So um, let's go ahead and say the serenity prayer together and start this off. Just by grounding in God grant us the serenity to accept things we can't change, to have courage to change things we can and wisdom to know the difference. Okay, so here we go. March 24th, page 84. The call came after church service, Palm Sunday, 12 years ago. Come home, your son is dead. A horrible accident had taken my only son. I'm still in a state of shock. The nagging, incessant, chest-beating shock that won't let go. Questions, I have a million of them, but no answers will bring back my beloved son. So what has helped me is my Al-Anon program. Many friends have sat with me in meetings, watched me cry and given me hugs and their shoulders to lean on. I'm grateful for those Al-Anon members who share their courage strength and hope in each and every meeting. Each precious point of pain is now a bittersweet blessing. By allowing my fellow members into my heart, I can feel the presence of my son and my higher power. That is a blessing beyond measure. So today's reminder, Alanon gives me permission to take whatever time I need to heal and a wonderful fellowship in which to do it. Gives me permission. I remember like just coming into Alan and myself and feeling that I was given that permission to heal and take whatever time it took. And I still do. I just remember that specifically even that phrase come to my mind, you know, I'm just wanted permission to be who I was and to learn how to be, um, grateful and learn how to be, just learn how to be present. And I was given tools and I still do. I mean, you don't just take the tools, you gotta you know, keep using them every day. That's what, in my experience, I just do the best I can. And um, sometimes it's, it's easier than others. And then I could remember and just take, take my time and pause and just, you know, have another opportunity in my life to, um, come back from it you know doing the steps for me really helps reading every day and saying my prayers in the morning and at night keeps me in a present state even in between like in between me like in between the like the the prayers which keep me present and reading which keeps me present I mean you know I still waver but I, I have those as sort of like a, like 
little lights in the road, you know, that kind of steer you, say that this is the way you, you go. I mean, you still can make choices, but there's still like um, visibility on the road. I mean, I can't, like, for instance, recovery and just what's coming up right now is like with using that metaphor with with like those those reflectors in the road i mean it, when i'm when i was when i would when i drove from florida to ohio i couldn't see ohio from florida right so i didn't know i mean i knew what it was because i'd been there before but like what would I see on the way and what experiences? So like just by being present, um, you know, looking for the next stop, you know, like just trying to make the next right step so as to get to the destination and who knew how that would feel like or be. You, know, you have some type of an idea because you you set you set out in some shape or form in a plan that you don't know how you know like like the the obstacles that may be in the way that are outside of you and so um Alan helps me prepare for those in myself so that I can accept what is and do the work, whatever needs to be done, leaving the rest to like the, the results to my higher power. And it's a process always. It's not like, oh, I got this. And I don't have this undying faith, like, because I, I, I'm always like, I have this how is this going to work? Am I, you know, how do I know it's my higher power guiding me? And I'm like, stop. It's not a woo woo thing. It's you do, it's you're a do woo thing. <laughs> like you do, you intend, you pray, and you see what, what plate is given each moment each day like today there was a lot of kids running up and down the escalator and I was like stop you know I didn't expect that yesterday that I was going to be dealing with those kids because I normally like go you know I'm in my own world somewhere doing some other things cleaning a dressing room or something like that but today I was like you know in an area where I could not not see it you know like I was in I was like right there where the escalators are and I was like okay this is not okay they they it's not safe they're just going around there's no you know like they're just here to play it's it's like and I'm like just stop stop it and so they did they left but I felt like, you know, I don't know. Sometimes you just have to say no. That's okay. I mean, there's some type of form of guidance. And I just felt like it was okay to do that because I wasn't like calling them names or like hating on them or anything. I was just like, you guys, this is a boundary. You know, that's, this is not, this is a boundary. Like this is, you don't you know, run up and down the escalators. You don't like go down backwards. Like this is like a safety thing. And, you know, doing whatever in those bathrooms, you know, you know, like, of course I, I was a crazy kid too. I mean, I was crazy up until I was 50 some years old. So I know what's going on and it's okay. It's just like, but I don't know. Like if you just let it go amok, it would go amok. 
like they'd be throwing the stuff and then they'd be like, oh, let's go up there and like, so kind of like there's rules here. No, I don't know. I got a lot of um, my colleagues though um, mentioning, oh, I heard you, you told those kids to leave. And I'm like, well, yeah, because they were, they shouldn't be doing that. But, you know, as long as they're not, if, you know, I just don't want them to hurt themselves and I don't want them to, to hurt the customers and I don't want them to hurt my colleagues, you know, because it's, it's kind of scary. Because there's so much things you, you're, you know, it's like they're, it's out of your control. And, um, uh, maybe, I don't know, just got to surrender to, to it. It just is what it is. There's no stopping it or no feeling sorry for the parents or the kids or the people in the world who couldn't have kids. Somebody was saying that like the lady that works upstairs all the time. And I know it, exhausts her I would I would think after a while if you're there all the time it, it does kind of like wear on you so I mean I can feel her but she's she is the one that I've had a hard time with um but I feel like it's coming around like I'm getting I'm I'm having empathy and compassion for her because she you know, she saw the kids and I was telling the kids like, stop, get off. No getting on the bed. You're not allowed to get on the bed. You got it. You got to go. And then she came over and she's like, I just feel sorry for the people in the world who wish they had kids. And I was like, what is that? I'm like, so that's sort of how she thinks, but you know, she has, she doesn't have a family or children. So maybe, you know, there was truth in that. So that's where, I mean, after all that happened and has happened in the last year plus that I've been working there and like me having this, this hard time with this person, you know, we are up there kind of like fighting, fighting the fight together, trying to like manage the chaos of these kids, these teenagers. And um, my thoughts were like, this isn't okay. And I didn't, I was like, they just need to stop because I don't want them to keep thinking it's okay to do that, at least not today. And um, and her thoughts went to more about like having these feelings about how other, how people wish to have children and feel sorry that the parents don't like, you know, like her expectations of what a parent should do in order to tame or discipline their children and not giving them discipline or not giving them something to do that's productive or whatever, you know, that whole thing where I just saw it as more of a, okay, a boundary break, get them out. And, you know, things are out of my hands. I don't know about their parents or not parents or any of that stuff because they're not there. And like, that's not on my business. My business is only like to just, you know, keep the safety area. I don't know what's going on. My cats are making all kinds of noise, but that's all I have. I just, I didn't know that was going to come up. I just was like, well, let me talk about like something big that happened today. Oh, plus I, I helped some people today, like get a suit and, you know, like that was a, I like an adult child buying a suit, trying to get a credit card. It didn't work out, but his mom was there and he lives with his mom and like, that whole thing, he spent quite a bit of money. I was like, okay, we're, we're like, you know, like spending over $900 here. 
and um, you know, so I just felt like there may have been like, you know, like right before your kids get to that point of being able to, you know, be like real adults and like take responsibility and start helping out with the family when it's needed. Instead, he was like still trying to make his way and he was getting the suit and getting the stuff and having the manners and being polite. But still, like it's it's a lot, right? And um, so I wish all of the kids and their parents well and um, all the things that are out of my control and it's none of my business. All I can do is is control when I have the courage to control the things I can. And that's myself, my attitudes, my perceptions, my actions, because I have to accept the things I can't change like other people. I can't change their attitudes. I can't change their perceptions and I cannot change. I just can't change things that are outside of me other than, you know, working on my responsibility with my attitudes and how I express outwardly and how that affects others. So hopefully I, I affected the kids that came upstairs and were starting to act up with, I mean, I acted respectfully, like you got to, that's not okay. You know, so that they would know what the boundaries were and hopefully next time, or maybe somewhere in their minds, they'll go like, that's not okay. I'm probably not going to do that. Maybe I'll go get a job. Maybe, you know, I wasn't like bashing them. I hope that they would have a, an experience knowing like, it's a, uh, it's, it's nice to be nice. Yeah. It's nice to have respect and learn how to, you know, take care of stuff. And but I think that's way too far out there. <laughs> I do feel like that's too out there. And, um, anyhow, So I love you and I will see you God willing tomorrow with another reading and um, having my, my hot chocolate with the magnesium and the, um, what else? Cause I'm going to get ready to take a little rest here. It has, what else was that? Oh, it's so nice and warm. I'm just kind of getting lost in the comfort of of my cup but it has the melatonin in it too so anyhow i love you all right please like and subscribe if you haven't already and um maybe share this content with somebody else who may benefit